All right, so welcome back. Today we're gonna to be putting to the test some of the most common testers that you would find on eBay or Amazon uh, for testing capacitors or transistors. Uh, over here on the left, we have just a basic Fluke 115 that doesn't have ESR. It just has a capacitance function right here that just shows it will only read capacitance on a capacitor. This device here will do uh, inductance, capacitance, and resistance. Uh, the one, this one here will do uh, the same thing as this, but it will also test transistors. And this one is strictly just an ESR meter. All are very good in, in their respect of what they are, and some have some downfalls to them compared to the others. Uh, this one is probably, uh, this one is a kit, you actually build it. This one comes in all sorts of different forms. I think you can get it with just a circuit board version and a case version. This is uh, what it is. Uh, it comes just like this, and obviously you know what the Fluke does too. The, these, I think, when I bought them, I believe they were around $100, and I think this was around $60 or $70, and I think this was around maybe $15 to $25, not, not anything expensive at all. You can find these pretty cheap. These are cloned like crazy. And a Fluke 115, I don't know what this thing's worth. I think it's probably a $100 meter or maybe a $150 meter, nothing, nothing special. So today I want to put to the test, uh, I just want to run a good capacitor and a bad capacitor across all these and try and explain or show you some of the differences between these meters and maybe what will be, um, what some of the meters won't show when, why you might need multiple meters to check, check a capacitor. On this meter you need to set it to diode and capacitance and press the yellow button. This will put the Fluke 115 into capacitance mode, and I'm just going to be putting my meads across the plus and minus. You should you should always show it the capacitor before testing. And we're getting 690. Whoop! It's kind of floating. Let's call it 670. And this capacitor is rated at 10 volts, 3300. So we know this is a junk capacitor. Okay, the meter told us that. Now, the problem with this is, this capacitor is so far gone that it is, it is obvious to this meter that the, the capacitance is low. But sometimes, sometimes, just on the edge of failure, these meters will read the correct capacitance or just slightly low within 15% or 20% and, you, and you'll think it's a good capacitor and leave it alone. When in reality, the uh, equivalent series resistance of this capacitor is probably not good and is starting to fail. I would um, definitely not just rely on just a capacitance meter for testing capacitors. You can if you want to put faith into it, but I think in the long run, it's no, you should definitely use an ESR. If you have high ESR on a capacitor, it could, it could cause high ripple on voltages, on DC voltages. It could cause heat in the capacitor and cause high frequencies. Basically, it just turns this into a resistor. It's turning this capacitor into a resistor, so it's going to create heat inside. Now, a capacitor is basically inductance, capacitance, and resistance all wrapped in one, but the resistance goes up as the capacitor ages or dries out. And that's why you want to check it with an ESR versus a regular multimeter. Regular multimeters are great for checking overall capacitance and will tell you if you, went, if you are within tolerance of its capacitance, but really doesn't show the whole picture. So up next is the Peak LCR meter. This is the LCR40. This is very nice. It is self-contained. It has some nice leads that you can swap out for different kinds of leads like uh, tweezer leads for doing SMD. This is an overall a nice capacitance meter. It also does resistance and inductance. I would I haven't had this thing calibrated since I bought it. It does have a calibration date on it when you first turn it on. I'm not so sure or I'm not going to have these things calibrated because I don't typically I'm not sending things to the moon so I really don't care if it's off by a little bit. So let's test a bad capacitor. This is showing 495. 
So there are some inconsistencies between these meters. I don't, uh, I wouldn't put too much stock into it because that was a, that is the bloated one. So it is subject to change. I'm holding it. I'm creating heat by holding it. So it might be changing in respect to that. The more, higher the ESR goes up, the more temperature, acceptable the temperature fluctuation is going to change it. All right, so now I'm going to test this with a good capacitor. And this is indeed a 1000 microfarad 16 volt capacitor. So it does show that the capacitance is within spec. I don't actually know the spec on this capacitor, but I would say since it's only off by nine microfarads, I'm going to call it good. Now, the only thing with this is this also does not show ESR. So we're also in the same boat as we are with the Fluke. It will show capacitance, but it will not show ESR. Now, this also has other features. So this is kind of, these, are, these two here only do capacitance. Okay, so this one here is the MK328 transistor, LCR, ESR tester. This is like uh, been cloned on eBay and Amazon like crazy. This is not a bad meter for what it is, and it is very inexpensive, and I would not rely on any of these for any kind of accuracy for doing any kind of high-quality repair. So we're going to be putting the bad capacitor on here and press test. See if it identifies it. It did. See it turned C, so that means capacitor. All right, so this is showing 32 picofarad. Not really what, not great for catching ESR all the time if the cap is kind of beyond its expiration. I also have another bad cap here I want to try on it. See if we can get any kind of ESR on here. Okay, so now we have a reading of an ESR of 5.3 ohms. That is very high considering if you use the chart, there is a general chart on the internet you can find for uh, ESR. And these, these values correspond to a voltage and a microfarad reading. And you just use the chart to figure out what kind of ESR you should be getting within for that capacitor, given capacitor. So this is showing about 110 microfarads at 5.2 ohms, voltage loss 33%, or V loss 33%. Uh, so let's, let's see how this ESR stacks up to the blue ESR meter. But like I said, this is good for an overall ESR meter, but it doesn't always catch it, what the ESR is if it, the capacitor is too far gone. But at that point, if it's not catching it and you don't get an ESR reading on the bottom, then I guess you can say you can just replace the capacitor because it's probably not, definitely not good if this meter can't even read it. Okay, so I have a good capacitor hooked up now. And this says 961 microfarads, which is a thousand microfarad capacitor. So a little bit different in capacitance compared to the other two that we've shown for measuring this. Uh, showing a V loss of 1.4% and ESR 0.12. 0.12 is a very is within spec for the ESR of these capacitors. So now we're moving on to the blue ESR meter. This is a kit. You can buy these and assemble them yourself. It's actually quite nice. I would definitely consider picking one of these up. They're quick, they're easy, and reliable. I've not had a problem with this. As long as you discharge your capacitors before measuring them and on any ESR meter, you should be good because you can definitely fry the electronics if you have a charge cap. So always make sure that capacitors are discharged. So on this meter, you turn it on and it will have a floating value. You have to short the leads and there's a button on top that you have to press that will zero it out. Now we'll hook up a bad capacitor. And we're getting 3.9 ohms. Now, I, on the chart, if you look at the chart, for a 3300 microfarad capacitor at 10 volts, it should be something 
a lot lower than 3.9 ohms. So this is definitely a bad capacitor, as we know, because it's the bloated one. We're going to be hooking up our good capacitor now. And this capacitor reads 0.1 ohms. Good capacitor. There is some variances across all the capacitance meters that I had shown you. All of them have a relatively good uh, understanding of what it's reading, but the values are kind of inconsistent across the board. I would say it all depends on the temperature, the, the bad capacitor, and the value of the capacitor, and the calibration of your equipment uh, that you're comparing to know if you're actually getting a decent value that is correct. So there is really no one better than the other. It all depends on what you want to have included in the meter. Like this one here is just strictly an ESR meter, but it has a nice little chart on here. tells you where your ESR should fall. I do like this one. I, I trust this over this one for ESR, just simply because it's a better built kit. This one here has the transistor and LCR and ESR built in, but I don't know about its accuracy. I really don't. I believe it's good in a pinch and it should be good enough to do any kind of general repair for hobbyist work. So this is a good value for what it is. This one here is a little bit more pricey and very accurate. As far as I can tell, I've tested this on other uh, capacitors before, even lower values, and it seems to be pretty consistent. So I like this for uh, doing SMD work, simply because you can change the leads out to a pair of tweezers. And I will use this as my general capacitance meter. So that's going to conclude this video on these four meters. Like I said, I would highly suggest having something over nothing. If you were to get if you're on a strict budget, I would choose this one. It is the best bang for buck, it is the cheapest, and it's if you're not really caring about its accuracy and you just need to identify if it's a problem or a part, what part it is, uh, I can probably say go for this one. It's cheap and readily available and comes in different varieties. You can get it in just a circuit board. It actually has another daughter board that you can plug onto it for testing smaller capacitors. Uh, this meter here is good too, just for ESR. This is kind of an older meter, but it still does the trick. I like the ESR reliability of this, and it's been very consistent for me over the years. This one here is very good for surface mount testing and for better accuracy. And I would use, like I said, this one here for just capacitance and overall value. So that's about it. That's going to conclude this video. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you in the next one.